Hello there. My name is Minister Barton Aaron Porter, and the title of today's Bible study is Love. Life's only valuable emotion. Today we're going to go into our Father's Word and we're going to learn about life's only valuable emotion, that is love. Now, I'm going to be using the good old King James Version of the Bible as I always do. So I encourage you to get your Bibles out and to study along with me. We're going to begin our Bible study in the little book of 1 John chapter 2. And there, uh, the apostle being guided by the Spirit of God, wrote in verse 9 through 11. He wrote, He that saith he is in the light. He that says he's in the light and hateth his brother is in darkness even until now. So you got a lot of people who claim that they're children of God and they're walking in the footsteps of Jesus. That's what he means by in the light. But they hate somebody. They hate their brother. They hate their mother. They hate their daughter. They hate this guy or that guy. He says, if you hate him, you're still in spiritual darkness even up to now. This is crucial, saints. He says in verse 10, he that loveth his brother abideth in the light. And there is none occasion of stumbling in him. Now, a person who truly has compassion and concern for their biological brother or brother and sister in Christ or their fellow creation. That's a person abiding in the light. That's a person who's doing the will of God, in other words. And there's no, there's nothing in the way that can cause them to stumble. 11, but he that hateth his brother is in darkness and walketh in darkness and knoweth not whither he goeth because that darkness has blinded his eyes. Now, this is very important. Because if you're walking around with hate in your heart for anyone and call yourself a Christian, you ain't headed to heaven. I'm here to tell you, you're headed to hell. And it doesn't matter what that person might have done to you. We cannot hate anyone and be saved into God's eternal kingdom. So we have to pray for God to transform our hearts, which is our minds to help us forgive people who have done bad things to us. And when we do, we set ourselves free. Because otherwise you'll be in bondage to that person your entire existence. And you're going to go to hell just like them if they don't repent. So I made up an acronym for the word hate. My acronym for the word hate is having anger toward everyone. That's my acronym for the word hate. Now, I didn't make up the acronym for the word uh, love. I found that, life's only valuable emotion. And so we're going to look at a couple of scriptures and what the Bible says about hatred and hate. Proverbs 26, verse 24 to 28. There the wise King Solomon, being guided by the Spirit of God, wrote, He that hateth dissembleth with his lips and layeth up deceit within him. So he says, the person who hates dissembles with his lips. And he layeth up deceit, treachery, or trickery with, within him. A person with a hateful mind does this. Go around saying things in, to people to cause friction between other people and things of that nature. And that's what he spends his time doing. That's how we know Satan is full of hatred because that's how he operates. He's a liar, Jesus said, the father of lies. Everything he says is a lie. And so if you're like th that, then that's, that's a person who's full of hatred. He says in verse 25, this person who, who hates, he says, when he speaketh fair, believe him not. Don't believe him, for there are seven abominations in his heart. There are seven detestable things in his heart. You know, he's he coming with flattering words, but it's all a trap. That's just how Satan got Eve to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You know, he came up pretending like he just wanted to have a little chummy conversation. Anyway. 26, he says, uh, whose hatred is covered by deceit, which means trickery or treachery. His wickedness shall be showed before the whole congregation. God is going to expose that every time, believe me. 
You know, people who are walking around harboring animosity against people and have hatred in their heart, God will always expose them. He says in verse 27, Whoso diggeth a pit shall fall therein, and he that rolleth a stone, it will return upon him. So you dig a pit to try to set a trap for somebody, you're going to be the one fall in there. You roll a big stone up to try to set a trap that's going to uh, roll down and kill somebody, it's going to come down and kill you. In, in other words, you're going to reap what you sow. Solomon writes in verse 28, A lying tongue hateth those that are afflicted by it, and a flattering mouth worketh ruin. So this is when you can tell whether or not you're a hateful person. If you're going around trying to get uh, things get people in trouble and set people up, even if you think you're getting even, you know, even if they legitimately done something to you, you can't hate them. You got to ask God to deliver you from that because God is all about love, all right? So let's go back to 1 John chapter 4. The Apostle John writes in verse 7 to 11, he says, Beloved, let us love one another. Why? For God is love. That's why. We claim to be his children. He's a God of love. We're supposed to be of love. He says, beloved, let us love one another for God is, for, for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. So people who truly love their fellow creation, these are people who have been truly converted. Okay. Verse eight, he that loveth not knoweth not God. You see that? For God is love. If you don't love the fellow creation, even the bad ones, you don't know God because God is love. You see that? Verse 8 said, God is love. That's what God is. Verse 9, he says, in this was manifest or made known. That's what the word manifest means. In this was made known the love of God toward us. Because God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. There was no greater act of love that was ever shown to man when God sent Jesus Christ into this world that Christ himself had a share in creating to die for our sins so you and I would have a chance to have everlasting life. Okay, no greater act. That's why Jesus Christ said, greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. You see that? That's why Jesus said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus said, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Jesus said, he that believeth is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So God is love, and he gave us the ultimate gift, the gift of eternal life, which was made possible by the precious blood that his son Jesus Christ shed for us at Calvary. So John says in verse 9, And this was manifested or made known the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. You see that? 10. Herein is love, or in this is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the perpetuation for our sins. That word perpetuation means the atonement, the covering. Okay? Verse 11. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. So we must never forget what God did. And if we focus on what he did, it will be very easy for us to love anybody because God loved us so much that he sent Jesus to die for our sins. Christ went to the cross as an innocent man. He went there because of the sins that you and I have committed and are committing. That's how much God loved us to make possible everlasting life in the world to come. So it doesn't matter what a person has done for you. I mean, done bad to you. Jesus did good for you. Jesus died for you and them too. So that's why he says, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. 
If the Lord can do something like that for a world full of sinners, then you and I ought to be able to love anybody. You got it? Okay, jump down to verse 20 in this same fourth chapter of 1 John. And John says, If a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. That means a woman too. For he that loveth not his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? So you can go around talking about, I love God. All you want. If you hate your brother or your fellow creation, uh -uh. you are nothing but a liar. And he says in verse 21, And this commandment have we from him, that he that loveth God loveth his brother also. Those are the first two commandments. To love the Lord thy God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind. And you have to love your brother as you love yourself, your fellow creation, in other words. Uh, that's what Jesus taught. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 43 through 48, Jesus said, Ye have heard that it, that it has been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thy enemy. 44, he says, But I say unto you, love your enemies. See that? Bless them that curse you and do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. You see that? 45. That ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good. And sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. So in other words, God is not asking you to do something that he doesn't do himself. All right? 46. Jesus said, for if you love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same. He said, if you love people who love you, what's, what's the big deal? He says, even the tax collectors do the same thing. That's what the word publican means. Um, 20, uh, 47. He says, and if ye salute your brethren only, the word salute means greet. If you greet your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do not even the publicans the same? So we got a lot of Christians who got it twisted. They think they're supposed to just be good to other Christians. Uh -uh. We're supposed to be good to everybody. Okay? Then he says in verse 48, Be ye therefore perfect. That word perfect means complete. You know, spiritually mature. It doesn't mean sinless, because none of us are sinless. But be completely a, a grown-up, mature Christian. Be ye therefore perfect or mature, even as your Father which is in heaven is mature. That's what he's saying there. So he clearly tells us that we have to love everyone if we want to be saved into God's kingdom, even our enemies. And we can only do that by relying on God's spirit. Okay, you can't do it within your own strength. And so in Matthew chapter 22, verse 35 to 40, Christ tells us the two most important commandments of all. Uh, it says there in verse 35, Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him, and saying, that's 35, 36, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? 37, Jesus saith, said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all of your mind, in other words, or your thoughts, the intellect of your mind, and with all your soul, which is who you actually are, your soul is inside your body, and with all your mind. You see that? That's number one. 38, he says, this is the first and great commandment. This is the very first one. 39, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. You see that? 40, on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. And that's why that acronym for the word love, I don't know who came up with it, is very fitting. Life's only valuable emotion. So you and I have to love God and our fellow creation, okay, if we want to truly be in his will. So if this particular Bible study has been a blessing to you, I encourage you to go to patreon.com slash Barton underscore Porter. And please, Make a pledge to support this ministry. 
no amount is too small. Whatever you can do will be a tremendous blessing to me, and you will be helping me to continue to produce these Bible studies and to get the true teachings of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit out. So, until next time, this is Minister Barton Aaron Porter saying, may the good Lord continue to bless you and keep you all the days of your life. And remember, the acronym for the word love is life's only valuable emotion. God bless you and goodbye.